everyone, my name is Ivan. I'm a marketing director of the Center for Marketing Analytics and Forecasting and a lecturer uh, in marketing and analytics at uh, Management Science Department of Lancaster University. And today I will be giving you a, a video about time series components. So that's the uh, topic com that comes naturally next from based on the topics that uh, Robert and John have discussed previously with you. So what are we going to discuss today? There are actually several questions. Uh, they all related. The first one is how can, can we analyze time series? Because the analysis of time series is slightly different than analysis of cross-sectional data or panel data. Then we will move to what elements does a typical time series contain? And after that, we will try to understand how can we extract those, uh, those elements, those components. So that's the brief plan. Hopefully this will not be a too long video. But we will see how it goes. So first thing first, here is a table for you. And uh, this table contains a time series. In the rows you can see years, in the columns you see months, and inside the uh, table you can see numbers which represent sales, different sales of uh, our product. And the questions that I have for you is, can you describe its structure? Can you actually tell me if this data has a trend, whether the trend is going up or down, does it have seasonality? Are there any special events? Uh, what, what do you think is the variability in the series? So when I ask all these questions to you, probably you will, you will uh, face a difficult situation, right? Because these are just numbers and it is very difficult to understand what structure we have when we just look at numbers. And this is sort of a first lesson in time series that whenever you want to analyze something, whenever you want to understand something, you need to represent the th things differently. And one of the classical uh, things that we can do is to plot things. So this is the same time series, but it is visualized graphically, visually. So we see sales, we see this uh, beautiful time series, and we can say a bit more just by looking at it than in the case when we had uh, the table. So, for example, we can roughly say what sort of structure it has. Maybe it doesn't have any strong trend, but the tr we see some sort of increase, nonetheless, from the very beginning to the very end of the series. Um, so, in general, whenever we plot things, we can see that different time series have different so sorts of structures. Uh, some patterns are recognizable, some might appear uh, repeatedly, some might just happen once and that's it. And on this slide you can see four types of time series from different domains. The first one has a bit of seasonality and probably it has a changing trend. The second one to the right, it has the trend going down. Then we have the classical air passengers time series from uh, Box Jenkins textbook where we see both increasing trend and increasing expanding seasonality. And then the last one is the financial data. And when we look at those uh, series, we can see that in some cases we can see that some things repeat themselves and uh, also we can see that there is some structure in those. So this is the first thing. We should plot our data if we want to analyze what's happening. But fundamentally, when we talk about any time series, any sort of data, we are saying that it contains two parts. The first part is a structure. And on this slide, I have a simplistic structure. When we have you know, some sales around 100 then, that then go up, then go down, go up again, and so on and so forth. So it is artificial example, but I think it fits uh, for the description of the structure. <clears throat> so this is the first element. What is the second element is noise. Noise is something that we cannot predict. Noise is uh, something that outside of our control. For example, if we work uh, for an ice cream shop, uh, then they have sales of ice cream, right? And they can say to some extent when the sales tend to increase, when they tend to decrease, but they won't be able to tell you for sure that, you know, on Monday we will have 150 units. Why is that? Well, because there is some randomness, there is some noise, and some people go for ice cream on Monday and some don't go. And for example, it's not possible to predict when I will go and, and get ice cream on campus. So when we have these two elements of structure and when we unite them, we get our time series. And uh, time series that is shown in this uh, plot below 
is the merger of the two things, the structure that we see above and then the noise. So yes, two parts, and the, to make things more difficult, they are unobservable. Neither structure nor noise are observable. And when it comes to trying to understand what is inside the time series, uh, we can somehow try capturing the structure. For example, we can do that using time series components. Um, we will come to that point uh, in a moment. Or we can try explaining some bits using explanatory variables. For example, we could have promotional activity. Uh, buy one, get one free, and all of a sudden we see increase in sales. So this is an element of a structure that we can include in our model. But when it comes to noise, as I said, it's uh, fundamentally unpredictable, so there is no point in trying to explain the noise using any tools that we have. So, uh, with the noise, actually, one more thing is that at least we can measure its variability. We can measure how much noise we have, uh, what is the uncertainty around it. And this becomes useful when we want to construct prediction intervals or do anything else uh, related to that. So, I said, I mentioned time series components. What are those components? And the first and the most important is level of the time series. Very roughly, it is just average value for a specific time period. So we can have average sales of ice cream uh, on, on Monday, or this specific Monday, or in this specific week. That would be the level of the series. Then the next component is trend of the series. And actually, the term trend is not very good in this context, because what we really mean is actually growth or change. So we are talking about the change of the value and talking about the average increase or decrease of that value from one period of time to another. Then there is a seasonality. Seasonality is a pattern that repeats itself with a fixed periodicity. An example of seasonality is every January we see increase in sales of uh, winter equipment or something like that. Um, and then there is noise. <laughs> the element that we uh, cannot control, as we've already discussed. In some cases, you might also hear that people are mention mentioning cyclical component, but it is typically ignored when we do the decomposition, and it's not very useful because it's difficult to capture. So we leave it outside of the scope of this uh, video. So let's construct time series. We start from the level without any noise, without anything, and here is the plot that represents that. This is just the straight line. Uh, we can build upon that and introduce the growth or the trend. And in this case, we can see that the slope of the line has changed, and <clears throat> now we are talking about the increase of sales from one period to another. Obviously, this is an artificial example, so in real life, we do not see such a smooth, beautiful, growing line. But for now, we didn't even introduce noise, so that's why it is so beautiful. Okay, so that's level, that's trend. The next one is seasonality. So we add seasonal component and we see these periodic changes that happen here. In this example that uh, I've produced, we sort of assume that we have quarterly seasonality. That's why things repeat every four observations. Okay, so level, trend, seasonality, and now only noise is left. And actually, if we add the noise to each of these components separately, then these uh, things start looking more realistic. Right? The first plot shows you level time series with some noise, the second is trend with some noise, and the third one is whole, whole, the whole thing, level trend seasonality with noise. So that's what sort of components we have in time series. Uh, these components can be added or multiplied, depending on this operation we will have different uh, dynamics of time series. There is a pure additive model where you just say we add level, trend, seasonality, and error, or the noise, and we get our actual value. Or there is also a pure multiplicative one which assumes that we multiply each of, of these elements. The multiplicative models become especially important in, <laughs> in real life because lots of things actually happen in multiplicative uh, fashion. For example, the seasonality tends to increase uh, in a non-standard way, we expect the increase by x percent rather than x units from one season to another. There are also some mixed models, and we will come back to them when we discuss uh, exponential smoothing, the ETS model. Uh, this is uh, one of the examples of these models, when we have level plus trend times seasonality and times error. 
Um, we leave them for now outside of our discussion in this video. Note that whenever we do time series decomposition, we assume a model. And this is a very important step because I've seen many times that people that work de with decomposition use it to find things in the data. But that's fundamentally wrong. If we assume that there is seasonality, the, this idea, this decomposition will give us the seasonality. So assumption of the specific structure comes first. And the other thing is that we never know this uh, structure and neither does our model, right? So all of the things that we do, they rely on some sort of assumptions that we make. We make assumption that level trend seasonality exist in the data and then we use decomposition to get those components. Right. So there is an, uh, another note that I need to make. Is, it is about seasonality type. Uh, I already mentioned there, there is additive and multiplicative seasonality. So what's the difference? The, pl the plot here shows uh, what happens when we have additive seasonality. We add things, so this means that the variability of data does not change with the increase of the level of the data or with, with the trend that we have. So if we pick the big, very beginning of the time series, we will see that the variability is roughly the same as at the end of time series. This is a characteristic of the additive model, while the multiplicative would look like this. You see that in the beginning, the variability is quite low, but because, as I said, we are talking about changes in percentage, then with the increase of the level, the variability increases as, as well. So this is the main characteristic of the multiplicative seasonality. Why is this important? Because when we look at the time series, we see what sort of seasonality we might have and then we assume a specific model, we use that and we can work with it, we can decompose the time series. Okay, so we have uh, several components. These components can be either additive or multiplicative. Some of them might not be in our time series. For example, seasonality does not always appear or a trend might not be there. So this gives us a, the whole taxonomy of different uh, time series based on these components. And according to this taxonomy, the trend can be none, so we just deal with level data. It can be additive, it can be additive damped. Additive damped means that uh, we, we are not saying that it's always increasing, we are saying that there will be a slowdown in the trajectory and it will uh, eventually get to the, some sort of level. Uh, it can also be multiplicative and it might exhibit a bit of explosive behavior, so that might be a bit of a dangerous type of model. And finally, we can have multiplicative damped, so it's not as dangerous and, as the multiplicative one. When it comes to seasonality, we are, talk, we are saying that there is no seasonality, either there is uh, additive seasonality or there is multiplicative seasonality. So three types. And you see it's five times three, we get 15 uh, possible time series that can be modeled using this approach, using this taxonomy. So this is the taxonomy that lies uh, in the core of uh, ETS approach, exponential smoothing. As I say, we will discuss that in the next videos. But for now, the question that we have is how can we extract these components? Because we want to explore, we want to understand what's happening and so on. So there are different ways of decomposing time series. There is a classical seasonal decomposition which originates from uh, 1919, I think it's pretty old but it works fine in many contexts uh, and it's very fast. There is seasonal transformation using LOES, or also known as STL decomposition. And there's a whole zoo of uh, X11, X12, X13 decompositions from census from the US. But these work mainly when you have only one seasonality in time series. But in real life, you might also have season several seasonalities. You might have, for example, a pattern repeating um, every Monday, but at the same time, the other dimension would be the pattern repeating every month or every year each month. So you might have several season seasonality, seasonal components there. And as the result, you need to have some sort of different decomposition. So that's why we also have multiple seasonal decomposition, which relies on the same principles as the classical one. And we also have multiple seasonal STL. <coughs> We're not going to discuss all of them 
there's no point in doing that. Uh, all of them use similar logic, use similar principles. That's what we will discuss. We will discuss the logic. And each specific one will have slightly different methods used in different steps. So if you know one, then it should be relatively easy to understand the others. It, maybe not going into too many details. So let's start. I'll, I'll do that with an example of time series. Uh, let's explore time series. We plot it. We see that there is a trend and there is an expanding seasonality. So this must be multiplicative seasonality time series. And this means that we should use a multiplicative model. Additive would not be appropriate here. We use multiplicative one. What do we do next? Well, we smooth the time series. How do we smooth it? It comes to the instr specific instruments you use. You can use, for example, centered moving average. This is old school classical. You can use more modern things like lowest smoothing. Uh, it's not important how, but you smooth time series, right? What, what it means, we get rid of seasonality and we get rid of noise and we just capture the trend component that we have in time series. So the thing that we end up with, this uh, line that we have on the plot, is the combination of level and trend components. So that's the thing that we're interested in. Next step, we need to detrend the time series. Depending on the uh, type of the model that you assume, you will have different formulas. For this case, we said that it's multiplicative. The detrended time series will be obtained if we take actuals and divide them by the smoothed ones. Uh, and that's the plot, that's how they will look. You see, we don't have trend anymore, but we still have seasonality in this example, and we still have a bit of a noise. So now we have uh, seasonality and noise. What do we do next? One of the optional steps, but we think that it's nice to have handy. You can plot the detrended series. You can plot and see how seasonality behaves from one period to another. So on this plot that I show you, on this figure, uh, on this figure, we see that there is a repeating element, right? Every January, there is a decline be below zero line, and then roughly every summer, there is an increase. So there is a repetition, there is definitely a seasonal pattern here in the data. Now, this is not very useful unless we can extract some sort of structure from this. And one of the ways of doing that is we need to smooth it again, right? How do we smooth it? There are different techniques. The classical decomposition says, let's just average every month. So we just collect all the genuaries that we have, we average them out and we get one number that represents every genuary. We do the same for the Februarys and so on and so forth. Uh, the more advanced techniques like STL would use more complicated functions to smooth things and they would probably allow, well not probably, they will allow components to sort of evolve over time. While the classical one says no everything is fixed, seasonality is fixed. So we to take averages and we end up with this line on the plot, the, the solid red line. Now we have several components, because this is our seasonal component. We already have the smooth series, we have seasonal component, and all we need to do is extract noise. How we do that? We sort of get the structure, so our detrended series, we multiply it by seasonal elements, so that we get our restructured time series, and then we divide actuals by this restructured series, and we get our residuals. Residuals are sort of estimates of the noise. <clears throat> and that's it actually, that's uh, the whole procedure. As you see, it's not too complicated. It's just trying to understand what steps we have and how to do them. Uh, so the residuals would, might actually contain a bit of a structure if we do this decomposition, because the decomposition assumes fixed uh, seasonality and assumes a specific trend. So there might be some issues in the residuals, but it's a good starting point, you know, you, you get something, some estimate of, of what is happening in the data. And on this plot, we see how the original time series in the very top is uh, split into uh, trend component, seasonal component, trend seasonal component, the combination, and then the residuals uh, from the data. 
So that's how the decomposition works. And when we have it in the end, we can also analyze our residuals, trying to understand whether there is, there is something we missed. Maybe there was a promotion that we didn't see when we looked at the data originally. Or maybe there is uh, something more complicated like autocorrelated structure, uh, which we are not touching yet. So that's the rough idea. That's the brief description of time series components. Uh, and a sort of a conclusion, what we've discussed, we, the main point we are building on is that any time series has structure and noise. We can capture structure using different methods, but noise is fundamentally unpredictable. And we will use this idea further in this uh, set of videos, because lots of methods actually are aware that there is noise and some are not really so much. And then we can decompose time series to get uh, its elements, and this can be done for different purposes. For example, for analysis of time series, or to remove seasonality, because in some cases your method cannot actually deal with seasonality. So what do you do? You need to get rid of it, so that the time, your fancy method takes care of the rest, and then you, re you reintroduce the seasonality. And then the third thing that is useful is we can get initial estimates of components for ETS when we come to that. So there are several purposes for the time series decomposition. Note that the results of your decomposition will differ from one method to another. You, get, you do classical decomposition, you get one result. You do STL, you get the other one. Even ETS can decompose time series and this will be the other thing altogether. So, Depending on what you assume, what model you assume, you will get different results. One more thing, this thing cannot be used to diagnose seasonality. I need to stress this out because, as I said, several times students came to me and said that, oh, we looked at it, look, there is seasonality. Here is an example of time series. The very first plot shows the original time series. The second one shows what happens with the smooth time series. Then the third shows you seasonal element the thing is, we asked the decomposition to give us seasonality, and that's why it is here. You asked for it, here you are. But it is not in the data, it is not in the original data. So decomposition cannot be used as a tool to diagnose seasonality. That's the last bit I wanted to make, last point. Uh, this video is done as a part of our educational videos for the Center for Marketing Analytics and Forecasting. Check our other videos and also the Center provides a variety of services. So you can click, check this uh, QR code or follow the link in the description and you will see what we do. One of the things is we actually provide educational training for companies and if you're interested, please get in touch with us. Thank you for your attention.